controversial subjects with the facts can be tense. But we are a sub science here to make things make sense. Okay, so <laughs> do we want to explain what edging is? Okay. For those of you <laughs> who are here listening, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay. Wait, wait, so like, um. Okay. So um. We're we're shy. Okay. okay. Edging is a sexual practice by which you do not let yourself reach orgasm. You might come close. You don't. But then you yeah. hold back. Some people call it surfing, which I think is like a kind of a cool adjective. You're surfing yeah, the wave. You're that's fun. Getting close to the big O. <laughs> and then what were you're the other stopping. names you said? Edging, surfing, gooning. baiting, gooning, baiting and gooning. Gooning apparently isn't British, but it sounds British. And so, yeah, inv- involves engaging in cycles of stimulation to the point right before orgasm, and then stopping and starting again. And so the theory is that it can lead to a more intense orgasm or increase the duration of sexual activity. And it can be done like on your own, like masturbating, you can edge, but also with a partner, you can whether you're doing it together or one person's edging, I know like uh, 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 don't come. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, definitely there's lots of people who are like super into that. There's people even in like the BDSM community, there's like someone will be like the dominator versus the person who's like letting the other person control that and let them <laughs> choose like they get to choose when they're having the orgasm, all consensually, of course. Um, so there's lots of ways that you can play with this idea, but yeah, I think it's like ultimately extending the sexual experience, pushing and building that tension for even longer. So with the idea that when you finally do release, it's much more intense than it would otherwise. And be. we're gonna try and be like sex positive slash like try. Yeah, of course we are. But you're right. No, but I mean like it's so you never know. hard. Like and when you talk about the science of things, like it's sometimes the science is so intense that you're like, is this sex negative? Like, yeah, you're right. So also yeah. it's like, what is sex positive? I just say I am it, but then I'm like, am I? <laughs> like, I don't know. Yeah. Like we obviously always want to be able to just like laugh and have fun on this podcast, but ultimately let it be known, let it be clear, like whatever your sexual preference in any way, whatever your kinks, like I think that's cool. I think also sex, sex is cool. so like... <laughs> It Sex is, is silly. No, it is like <laughs> funny if you take it so seriously. I find yeah. it so interesting that like we have sex and like shit gets like so intense because like humans are so like vulnerable. Well, it is extremely vulnerable to have sex with someone to let them in. And especially if you're going to play with the ideas and break away from traditional sex, it's important to have rules and it's important for it to be taken seriously so as to not take advantage of people and not hurt anyone. But, you know, but also at the same time, it's also like when you watch two people having sex, like not in the movies, <laughs> like it can be pretty like, okay, now nah, I'm like, I'm definitely sex negative. <laughs> yeah, like it can be like sex. funny. Like it doesn't have to be this yeah, like you crazy, think of it in like the animalistic context. You're like, yeah, that's just like, it's obviously animals hot, having sex. but it's like, there's something that's so serious about it. Like, like the like Zane and Taylor Swift song for like the 50 shades of gray. Like it's so like, but it's like, sometimes it's actually like, okay, wow. That looks like two squirrels who are yeah. trying to procreate. And that's fair. Okay, in 1956, a paper came out that said that edging would help for people with erectile dysfunction. Oh. And that has kind of culturally... With erectile dysfunction? Sorry, premature ejaculation. Oh, okay. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. Thank you. I also got that study and I was like, wow, even with erectile dysfunction, that's interesting. Well, okay, so, but like my point is that... How do you edge if you don't have an erection? (laughs) You're like, I'm edging. It's like, yeah, you're not hard. Okay, so people think that... Even now, some people will maybe do this practice Mm -hmm. if they have premature ejaculation issues like at home. And um, also for women, if they're like maybe wanting to increase their sexual desire, sometimes Mm -hmm. they will do it. And I think there's like been a lot of studies about how edging for women could be helpful for like understanding like their own sort of like ability to then come with like a partner for sure and i think it can provide you the opportunity male or female or whatever like you can experience your own body it gives you the chance to not just have it be like quick and over with it's like no extend it learn what feels good for you so you can articulate to your partner so you know what you like what have you ever like consciously edged like not really (laughs) like have you ever gooned baby like 
Not not so as intensely as like obviously I can like see it in porn and stuff. Wait, you can see edging in porn? Are you nuts? <laughs> wait. You're lying. <laughs> no, wait, wait, Stop wait. What do you mean? What do you mean? Little... Wait, what do you mean? Oh, like in like you oh. can see it in porn. Okay, you mean like you mean like there's like those porns where they're like edging porn. <laughs> 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 no, but you mean like you can't. It's not like it happens in like a Wait, okay, I'm sur- short circuiting. I can't tell okay. if you're lying. No, I'm not. I'm saying, okay, I definitely have stumbled across porn that's like called edging, and it's like the whole context of the porn is the concept of edging. In like what? Like what are and you saying? And then I'm saying, I thought that you were saying like when you're watching porn all the time, they're like, da da da, like edge time, baby. But no, it's like. No, some porn is just people being edged by someone else. Like they might be in yes. handcuffs. I have seen tie- that. They I've could seen be tied that. up so they actually cannot yeah, I touch know. themselves. I've seen that. Okay, there you go. Welcome to the club. So that's <laughs> like being tied up though. That's like very edgy. Like I, I, from what I was reading in these studies, it was like people who like maybe with their partner, it's like. A discussion and then it's not of necessarily course. like tying them up and blindfolding them no but like, that's a form where somebody else is controlling it okay so versus yourself another thing about edging and this is tea mama what what <laughs> what was it that oh yeah recently someone said their mom was like oh wow they were throwing shadow <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> instead of throwing shade which is so good and my my dad called her megan three stallions <laughs> okay <laughs> so okay I love boomers, um, except it's like vote for the right people and climate change is real. Uh, so, okay. In Toronto, there's a gay beach. Okay. Well, that's horribly, that's not necessarily, it's not just a gay beach, but there is like a clothing optional beach. That's like historically like very queer. And there is like cruising that happens like in the woods. And from what I've been told about it is that like a lot of the people there are edging. So they're like going to cruise and it's like the concept of like coming, this is like so specific, is sort of like something that like you maybe do at the end of the day or is not necessarily. Yeah, you're like turned on the whole time having sexual experiences, but not for the sake yeah, of just you're finishing not, yeah, until you're like, like done. Okay, that makes sense because it seems like there's these people who are in the woods like, I'm just at the beach like smoking a joint listening to like Lord, <laughs> Justice for Solar Power. But like, and I'm like, oh, those people are in there a while. Like, what is happening? It kind of makes you a little confused. And someone wants to explain that to me. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Yeah. Like, they're all maybe interested in this, like, concept. Which can lead me, if we want to, to the pit. Should I start talking well, about Well, maybe I'll go issues? first because I wanted to talk a little bit about those studies on premature ejaculation. Okay, yeah, that's interesting. But just one note on that. I would say there's lots of forms of edging. Like, it can be intentional. It can be unintentional. Even at like sex parties or if somebody wants to like have sex for a long time, they not be, may not be consciously going like I'm edging, but they might just be like, I want to have this experience for a long time. I don't want to just like have an orgasm. And it's and like, go. oh my God, the patience, <laughs> <laughs> the time. <laughs> and some people have patience, which you don't. Yeah, no. I That's know. why you don't edge. <laughs> <laughs> you literally don't have the patience. Um, or honestly, you could just be like watching porn for an hour. That's edging. Okay, so that's the other thing. Like, I definitely have had sex for long periods of time and, like, watched porn for, like, I guess... Hours? Like, <laughs> no, no, but I mean, like, to the amount of time where it's like, yeah, I'm not, Technically, like, you're, like, like doing I a form of edging. I could truly yeah. come in a minute if I wanted to, mm. but it's like, no. And I'm like, so, so like, that I mean. is it's interesting. a large variety yeah. of ways that you can edge. I'm a gooner. Now, okay, now it going sounds back, so wrong. Going back to premature ejaculation... The reason I pulled my study from this is because this is where most of the actual research on edging comes from. For premature ejaculation. Because there's not a lot of like studies into edging just because it's like it's something people can do for fun. But like I don't know that there's like there has been some evidence that it can change like the hormone balance short for short term in like both male and female bodies and in different ways. But outside of that, there's like not. I guess there hasn't been a real purpose that people have tried to study. Yeah, it's a weird one Whereas to study. premature ejaculation in men specifically is like one of the most common sexual problems. So there has been lots of research into that. Um, and basically there have been two techniques developed um, and studied, one called the squeeze method and one called the start and stop method, which is ultimately similar to edging the start and stop method. Huh. Um, 
to help people who have premature ejaculation issues learn to manage them and be able to last longer. And this is like doing like starting and stopping through like masturbation or I guess yeah, it could so be with a partner. Yeah, so start and stop. Yeah, it can be alone. It can be with somebody else. The start and stop technique is exactly what you think. You get really close to orgasm, but not so class, close that you can't control it. That might only be like 30 seconds for someone and then you stop. And then you repeat that several times and it helps your body like recognize that Whoa. phase more clearly of when you're like Wild. too close to the edge Fun. through trial and error. <laughs> um, and the squeeze method is literally that you, um, you go up to orgasm just before and then you actually squeeze the head. Squeeze of your, your dick? Like the head. It what? Says, Ow. says like... Um, where does it say? The Put head? pressure on the head of the penis to decrease the level of arousal. It can be done by putting your index finger on the back side of the penis where the head joins the shaft and placing your thumb on the other side of the penis and then gently squeezing. Okay, no offense to them, but isn't like the head of the penis sensitive? I'd be scared to do it. It would probably depend, come. but this is what I mean. It's <laughs> trial and error and it might be discomfortable for some people. And at least it's just like putting pressure in a way that then you stop for 30 seconds and wait. So wow. studies have been done on this. Um, especially in this particular study, it was like men who within one minute of intercourse were uh, ejaculating or having an orgasm. And after the edging and training techniques, they were able to increase this time to about seven or nine minutes. Oh, so that's pretty significant. Yeah. So I thought that's where a lot of this sort of like edging idea, the stop and start method, while not maybe as like sexy, has been like very useful for many people. They were saying that in women too, edging again can help them to understand like their sexual techniques or I guess people with vaginas is more mm -hmm. accurate people with vaginas it's like helpful because of how sex is just like an orgasm can be more complicated and then also that some people when they edge with vaginas will like lose their arousal completely when they stop and like edging mm -hmm. doesn't work for them so they were saying how like people can like like with vaginas can edge and definitely learn about the, and like masturbate and try it to try and like increase their ability to perform sexually better with partners. But then also there are some people who it just doesn't work for yeah. because when they stop, it's they like lose arousal. Whereas they found with men that doesn't happen as frequently with edging. Yeah. It's like, kind of like they're not halfway through feeling. Yeah. It's like when like you driven yeah. more to orgasm. Yes. And I just was like, Oh, that's <clears> such an interesting thing that like you would well, want to know if you had a vagina to be like, it's there's not also like the stereotypical and this is, you know, often true, but not always true. Of course that men like finish much faster than women. Um, and so it's an opportunity for men to practice edging so that they can allow women to get to orgasm as well, or to experience the pleasure true. In just the same way to like, not only for men who prematurely ejaculate, but like lots of men yeah, are like longer. focused on themselves. And even in like queer relationships, it's like one person might just get their way faster. So it may be beneficial for them to focus yeah. on how to edge themselves. So they're not like, so they can extend the pleasure for their partner as well. Yeah. It's like if you ha it, it was most of the studies around it are about whether you're feeling anxiety or that you're like maybe not having fulfilling sexual experiences. It's a way that you could try to learn about your body to make that anxiety decrease and maybe feel more fulfilled. Mm. But now I'm going to talk about its link to sexual compulsive behavior and how edging like from a neurophysiological perspective could be like something that tips you into that category. I'm like just pausing because I'm like, is that noise coming from outside our door or is that our unit? What door? What noise? Oh God. I just what hear, I'm just, I'm just, because we're anxious about noise. What noise? What days, noise? Oh, I think that's our unit. But I've never heard it before. But then there's another noise, which is like someone throwing out their garbage. No, okay, I'm sorry if you're hearing now more noise. Now there's another noise too, but that's just like a high pitched <laughs> noise from someone outside. Okay, I just am like hypersensitive now that we had those audio. So okay, this, this I, is just a local noise. I think noise. that the, we know what the audio noise was, and it was a buzz from the electricity of this sign. I know that, that noise. I don't think will bother people. You Are you talking. getting? I'm up? just gonna listen no. to it. What? Oh my god, your blonde hair. Yeah, no, it's not like someone outside. With like, well, we recently had this like furnace changed and fixed, so I think it just oh, sounds different than normal. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I was like, what? Someone outside with like a low. No, I didn't know. If in the you in the building, there was like some construction or something going. Oh, on. Oh, yeah, no, that's our unit <laughs> or a generator. That's our okay. baby. That's side our side and side so edging to I'm low. edging to learn. I mean, we're edging the audience right now. Yeah, about why edging could be bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so this study was really interesting. It was. Not very many people, it was only 19 men, in this case, people with penises, and they got people to 
enroll if they said they had compulsive sexual behavior, which they in this study thought was people who would masturbate and prolong their masturbation in some ways edging for three hours a day. Oh, okay. Wow. So it's like, this is people who are edging with porn. Then they also brought in like controls and they had them watch pornography versus sports videos and they studied their brains and they found that people who had been quote unquote edging or gooning or watching lots of porn, but not coming quickly, like for long periods of time, keeping that arousal state high, the brain regions that were associated with dopamine, which, which we've talked about before were high, literally physically larger and higher than these people and the brain regions that are addicted, that are linked to addiction to drugs and sex and alcohol were also a lot bigger in those people. Mm. And they were like, okay, it makes sense from a neuroplasticity perspective that if you are edging to porn a lot, you're increasing the amount of baseline dopamine that's firing in your brain, changing the size of those neurons, the amount of those neurons in those pathways. And as we're starting to become more and more aware of compulsive sexual behavior, compulsive sexual disorder, People are like, this could be something we need to study for the future about how it throws people into maybe that category. Mm -hmm. So sex addiction is not a term that's like accepted in the scientific community. It is sexual behavior disorder or sexual compulsive disorder, which I think is important to think about because it's like you calling someone a sex addict is like kind of intense and like is not like appropriate in the same way that you're not really supposed to say an alcoholic. Sure. So say someone with an alcohol use disorder. Okay. So I think it's like those, that language, I think it's helping people to understand where they fall rather than just being like, oh, I'm not that, or I am like that. Like you either are or you aren't. There's yeah. There's like a range of behaviors yes. that. And like when I think about the concept of even just edging to porn, like the way that some people I have like listened to talk about this who believe that sexual compulsive disorder is an issue, will think that that is an obvious step towards needing more time spent mm -hmm. having sex, needing more, um, in some cases, extreme visuals in order to come, like yeah. all those things. Like it can be a scale that increases. Whereas there's also some other scientists and therapists who think that compulsive sexual disorder is not even a real thing. Mm -hmm. And it's just an excuse that some largely white, powerful men use to get out of situations where they've like cheated. I see. To like say, I couldn't help myself. Yeah, like. which I think is really controversial. It's why this stuff's so interesting because it's like, it reminds me of like sort of we're on the precipice of a new type of psychology and science and therapy and like public consciousness coming into play around these concepts. Yeah. But I think what's interesting is that edging physiologically from this study could be linked to losing some control around your compulsive behavior with sex. And I was like, that's interesting to yeah, me. Uh, no, that is interesting. I think it makes sense. And it, it, like, it makes sense to me that even, even just like watching porn for three hours in a row, whether you're edging or not, like whether you're even touching yeah. yourself is going to change your mind. So doing anything for an extended period of time is, you know, shaping your brain and how you see the world and how you interact with it and what affects what turns you on. Like it's the same reason that people can become uh, linked with a kink because like they do sexual activities around those things and then that becomes sexualized. So obviously there is always a quote unquote risk if you're going to like do a behavior many, many times. This is where I get into the sex positive, sex negative thing. That's I find really hard to balance. Well, I think, from the research. I think as long as like as a communicator, like for us that we just are clear that this we're trying to just like talk about the research, but of course research can also be in it like in not indebted, but carry bias as well. Yeah. But so hopefully we're able to just like talk about the potential risks, but also know that like many people practice very safe, safe sexual behaviors and are control in their own bodies. Yeah. And comfortable and happy. And they can choose if something becomes a problem, right? Like yeah. everything is a gradient. The dose is the poison. Even in food, it's like nothing is good or bad. Yeah. And hopefully science can be as unbiased as possible, which is not, you know, a hundred percent possible, but hopefully it can just say like, here's what we find. And the more studies we have, the better idea we get of like, is this actually overall a detrimental practice or for most people, is this a perfectly healthy practice? And we just need to be careful that some people don't get like overly impacted. Yeah. By it. It's kind of interesting though. It's just like an episode about edging and then you start to get into these like really 
Well, I'll cover. Okay, so like the pitfalls that I have found in research were one, it can contribute to epididymal hypertension, otherwise known as blue balls in any sex, like whether you're male, female, or anything in between, blue balls is not exclusive to men. But of course, blue balls is mild at worst and easily remedied. So that's not like a, a medical condition you have to worry about. But because you're pulling in like so much blood, um, it's like swelling your genitals. Oh like my God, hypertension of the. Yeah, which is blue balls in the first place. Um, like if you don't have to be edging to get blue balls, but like if you don't orgasm, that release is not always there immediately. And so that can be mildly discomforting. Um, it can also lead to idiosyncratic masturbation, which is what I think you were kind of talking about um, or, or sexual Wait, behavior. So that uh, means like that? when you practice anything over and over and over, you can become used to that sp- specific form of stimulation yeah so like then maybe when you're trying to reach orgasm another way you're no longer stimulated that so that could mean like you could get used to masturbating with your hand too much or with a toy too much and then when you have a vagina or a penis or an asshole they're like or not as ass. stimulating good 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 <laughs> or a tight ass like you may not be able to be stimulated in the same way because it's not the way you've like contextualize sex it might be harder you might have issues with that so it's important to know like especially because edging can be a very long form practice you're building those habits idiosyncratic masturbation yeah right so like it's the same with watching porn like if you watch too much porn you actually may and just masturbate you may not find sex as enjoyable gotcha, gotcha, because gotcha. like you're so conditioned to enjoy just like that is like what i was talking seeing about. something from a specific yeah. perspective and then the last one was um just delayed ejaculation or difficulty reaching orgasm. So for some people it can impact how long it actually takes them when they even want to orgasm. Wow. So it's like, it's like obviously edging helps people who premature ejaculate, but then if you go keep going, it's like, then you're like, Oh wait, now I can't. Yeah. (laughs) And again, the caveat here is like these studies are mostly just looking at for some people that doesn't mean somebody started from premature ejaculation and it made them go all the way where they couldn't ejaculate now. Yeah. It's more just like some people who have practiced this were found to ultimately end up having trouble reaching orgasm because they had it could be just um causation it could be correlation like we don't yeah. necessarily know but this, there there was a 2014 study so that is kind of a long time ago when i think about how far like porn's come and it said it was only of 96 women and found that those who masturbate or edge are were more likely to reach orgasm when they had sex yeah i mean i think it's important to note the differences between different kinds of people right like yeah. men typically are going to orgasm faster and women are not and so edging for women might actually allow them to reach yeah. orgasm in this case they were saying it was like women who were masturbating or edging probably on their own time mm. then they had a decreased um it de- the reason why when they surveyed them after was that they think it decreased their anxiety around sex and being Mm. able to pleasure themselves during sex to be like, it's going to be fine. Yeah. 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 Yeah, There's so much shame and embarrassment around sex. Like even going back to the first part of the podcast, when I talked about squirting, it's like so many women feel shame around it and like are embarrassed by it. But if you can own it and know that it's actually like sexy and a totally normal thing, then you might be more compelled to want to experience that. But if you're like, you know, doing it and you didn't know it was going to happen and you're with a partner who like has no idea what it is that can be induce a lot of shame. And so I think same with like, you have to learn about your body and be comfortable and know what I'm doing is normal. I don't need to be embarrassed by it. Like I can be focused on my own pleasure. There's a poster in front of us where we record. There's just a bunch of mushrooms. It just looks like I'm staring at all the different kinds of dicks. (laughs) It's like all the different types of vessels for edging (laughs) clitoris is even, Oh my God. See that's, that's that's loud. I, what is that? That's our first. No, but that wasn't earlier. I know, but what is that? No, that's bad because what if that happens when we're trying to sleep? Hold on. Oh no! See, I knew something we need was to up. like. I'm gonna pause. And wow, try and turn it you off. know, for a blonde, you're really smart. Oh no! I'm gonna press pause and then we'll come back. I'm pressing pause. Okay, everyone is watching. I'm full freak out. Oh my god! What was that? It sounded like Shrek farting for like minutes on end. It was just the fan. I'm going to fix it. I'm a tech bro, okay, wow. engineer, um, a handy person. So not that Ooh. we value any of those things, um, <laughs> but also equally, those are great things to be a handy person. It kind of, right. it kind of sounded like edging. Okay. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I was listening to a podcast about sex addiction and there was this one episode about this guy who, 
when I was listening to it, I was like, this is edging. <laughs> but he was <laughs> saying that he was like, when you're a sex addict or for him, again, it's like, that's not even the proper term, but he was like, for me, the biggest like bummer was orgasming. Hmm. So he was like, I see. Cause then it's over. Cause then it's over. It's all about this like chase hmm. about this, like dopamine, like yeah. constant firing his brain. And he said that like, sometimes he would lock himself in a room and watch and masturbate for days on end. That's obviously extreme. But then he was like, even when it came to like going out, like apparently he was like a very attractive man and he like had like some crazy like banking job or whatever. <laughs> and so like, even when he decided to like do a bunch of drugs and like go out and like meet someone one night, it was always about like keeping the it chase. high and never like, he right. was like, I never felt worse than when I like came and was like, it's over. Mm. And I was just like, whoa, that is like, a flip side of edging. Like, you sure. know what I mean? It's like, but that a is really the dark extreme. Way of talking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I just thought and not really related. To, I guess it is edging in some ways, but you can probably edge psychologically as well. Yeah. Know? Sorry. I just mean this whole episode, like, cause we were doing this episode, I was listening and I was like, this is like a really dark portrayal of mm -hmm. edging, <laughs> but it was like, but it still is. And it links back to that study about changing your brain. Mm -hmm. If you're, if you are edging, like daily all the time like you're it's going to be harder maybe for you to have yeah and i think anything you use as compulsion it's like the same as phones like obviously sex and orgasm are so stimulating and really such a response that if you're like using it as distraction that could easily become like more your where you go when you're anxious where you go when you're overstressed where you go when you're like trying to like i don't know just like get rid of some of your emotions yeah um yeah. Okay. That, but, that, that but that's sense. not like an excuse for people. Like you said earlier, people sometimes <laughs> use these like, well, I have a compulsion and I can't help myself. And that's why I cheated on you. Blah, blah, blah. Like we're not here to explain or work. Like that's a therapist's job to work with yeah, somebody yeah. on how to undo or figure out where those compulsions are coming from. And like you said, it's a hard, was well, not a hard line. It's a gray line, but it's a hard line to figure out where, yes. where one begins as a perfectly normal, like healthy practice in exploring sexual parts about yourself and where that can blur. And also that's just like a societal norm, right? Like we have to, we decide as society, like what are the normal ways to have sex and what aren't it? How often missionary is too much? guy, <laughs> girl, and with God watching. <laughs> but I, yeah, like it is true. Like what is normal sex? It's like, okay, well I'm like, ours involves anus holes. And for some people that's not normal. Like, exactly. And I think it, <laughs> it goes, like that's why so many people just bring it back to like as long as it's consensual and it's not causing any damage to people like you have to let people kind of do what they compulsive want. is an interesting word compulsive sexual behavior the word compulsive is very that is like reminding me of what you're saying it's like if you're using it to escape mm -hmm. like if and you're using, using edging, though it's like it's like compulsive phone use it's like not necessarily a choice you're making yeah. so you're not you're not like consciously using your phone to escape your anxiety of like, oh, I've got this like paper I'm writing and I just feel anxious right now. I'm just going to like go on my phone. Yeah. But you are ultimately maybe pacifying yourself. Yeah. Like the moment of anxiety and not yeah. learning how to sit with it longer so you can actually like sit through working. Whoa, longer. therapist talk. Sit with it. Well, I mean, neither of us are therapists or professionals no, in but any of this regard. Okay. So don't listen to Hand up, <laughs> no professional, whatever. But if I was a therapist, one line I would be really getting used to saying is, okay, okay, sit with that. <laughs> Okay, okay, let's sit with that. My and least it works. favorite thing a therapist does, and not because it's bad to do, but because it throws me into a spiral, is when they say, sit with that and like think, and then let me know what you're feeling. And then the second they say that and look at me, now all I can think about is like, what am I feeling? What am I feeling? Oh my God, I have to think about what I'm feeling, and now all I can think about is how they're watching Well, then they're probably waiting like, for me okay, to okay, so he has anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, it does say a like, lot. when I'm just have the chance to think about it on my own it's great but as soon as somebody's like what are you feeling i like can't find it yeah no it's like that, when someone says walk normal and now you yeah, like suddenly can't walk like, normal like yeah all of a sudden you're walking like breathe drunk. normal yeah i can breathe normal <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i i okay so 
But like, I have one final would, thing about edging. Would you edge? Okay. Yeah, I think it's fun to experiment with things. Like, yeah. oh, I'm down to try. You're gonna goon, babes. I'm down to goon. I, I have to be sure that word is right. I know we're absolutely Sounds... taken off the air. <laughs> <laughs> like, just like completely. I'm not gonna say it anymore. Um, there was a few myths. I mean, I think these are all related to like male anatomy. So hopefully this isn't too biased. But just it was like, um, edging cannot cause semen or ejaculation to back up into your body. Like, oh hold, my god, obsessed. Like holding on and waiting doesn't cause damage to your body. <laughs> you like edge and then all of a sudden you burp out. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's rumors that it can cause retrograde ejaculation, which is a real thing where oh semen ends up in the bladder. Um, and so it's like that cannot happen with edging. Um, and if you don't ejaculate, it's not a problem either. Like we said, perhaps you'd have a case of blue balls, but ultimately your body will just break down and recycle like what it needs to. We already have an episode on blue balls and maybe we should do another one. Um, it is kind of funny. It's like you just like edge and like never come. And then you're like, you, I could see like back in the day, they'd be like, your balls will get so big. They'll explode. <laughs> your sack. Well, I mean, you, you know, like people have nocturnal <coughs> missions for that exact reason. If you're not ejaculating, your body needs to, yeah. it's going to do it on its own. I wish I had like more edging experience. I could come and sit down and be like, so, this is how it works, but I don't. Sometimes, like gay guys and like on like grinder and stuff, will be like edging. So it's like, wow! Like if you go and say yes to said person, they show up, and it's like, well, I, set, hopefully you got a Titanic length of three hours on your hands because <laughs> we're gonna edge. Yeah, I'd need to know the amount of time I'm like ready to commit. To yeah, it, it's like know? maybe I have edged because like it's like meditation can be fun, but if I don't know how long I'm yes. doing it, that's stressful. Yes. Like if I'm again yes. thinking 30 minutes and it's three hours, that's like a very different mental experience. Yeah, <laughs> like to do the like porn version and be handcuffed and then like have it be someone yeah. else's. I need like it to be wild. 20 minutes. Oh my God. And it would be such like good porn because if it was like one of us, because we'd be like, please, please. <laughs> <laughs> it would probably be like, so what is meant for it? Okay, that's all I have to say. Yeah, me um, too, kind of. Like, onwards. hopefully we didn't, like, offend anyone. I'm always so scared with some of these sexual... Yeah. Like, I don't I don't think we did, but... Um, but no, if we did. I mean, you can message us and educate us. I mean, this episode is because someone messaged us to do it. Yeah. Uh, and, they, and they said to talk about whether it's, like, a good or a bad thing, and I think we covered... Yeah, conclusion, I think, ultimately, was. is that it's fairly harmless, and if you enjoy it, go for it. I think it's, like... Obviously, when it becomes linked to porn, like porn is always like a, a slippery slope. Yeah. Not that, not because it's bad, but because like excessive porn. Consumption and it's just like, it is crazy because of our phones. What porn is going to do is doing to our brains. Like it is kind of like it, it wasn't that long ago that people had like Playgirl, and Playboy, <laughs> which was like a like static image of like. A yeah. And not long before that, when they were like, I saw her ankles. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> true like the titanic it's like they lifted their <laughs> skirt and saw like a knee yeah like i mean it is it is a fast acceleration i think through the internet of these issues and it's like even the idea of like being like oh there's a parental block on my computer i'm like do those even exist anymore for sure okay they do <laughs> but i mean i'm like i'm like i can't imagine there aren't like people savvy enough like yeah like kids smarter isn't than it their like, parents i'm like if, if is it just safe search off well, like, no, you probably button? need a password. Okay, smart, 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 smart. How, like, <laughs> but on my like on my computer, I'm always like, wow, tricked my computer. Safe search off. And I, just click I a mean, button. yeah. But I, you're right. Our they parents should be didn't grow up with technology, and probably actually our kids will have different technologies that we probably are too dumb to understand. Anyway. Yeah, I just mean like I can only assume if a kid has a phone, it's pretty hard to control. Like what? Yeah, but you can you can you can have controls on at a okay. at a certain age. Like your parent controls your phone. That's the entire reason YouTube made the YouTube Kids app because it is like such an issue wow. that they were like, we will <laughs> go to jail for this if we don't sort out how parents can <laughs> guarantee their child will never see something inappropriate. Okay, have you seen everyone out there the viral video of the YouTube video of the guy who nares his butthole and he <laughs> says, so it's a YouTube video and he goes, okay, so to start, this is my butthole before I shave or put nair on it, and then he spreads his cheek and shows his whole and it's on youtube everyone's seen it so it's be well i mean i'm sure not everyone okay, I mean, listening like has 40 not million everyone people. has seen the spread whole youtube <laughs> but okay so that is allowed to be on youtube why because it's educational because it's education sex education is important and maybe maybe it's not monetized <laughs> the same way most videos would be or, or it's monetized and nair's getting a fat paycheck Sorry, there, might, there are brands that are totally okay with like Wow. Sex talk, um, drug But that's talk. not on the YouTube Kids app. For sure. Not. Okay, so that's this type of content that yeah. can slip by. 
That is crazy to me. What is? It's such a funny video. It's it is like, so funny. It's so like, surprising that more people haven't. So like, funny. Does that mean because there's probably wait. such a trend we're not aware of right now? So many people showing their also buttholes. like we're ASAP science, so we're educational. So like, if in the middle of my video about climate change, I just spread my cheeks no, and showed my whole that would not be okay. Why not? Because you're not. <laughs> you have to be teaching about it. Okay. What if I was teaching about colon cancer and I was like, sure. The first place you should look is up here, and I bent over and showed then the i think star. that'd be fine okay well it's the guys, same reason subscribe. why like birthing, birthing videos <laughs> under the context of education are allowed but you can't just like show genitals for no reason okay so subscribe to asap science because i think i might be doing an upcoming <laughs> video about rectal exams and i'm gonna see how far i can go about hemorrhoids that's probably like like i'm curious about what would happen <laughs> Like, would it be like Toronto star? Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like Toronto it. based science communicator has lost his <laughs> mind as he spreads Plots and shows for whole. international yeah. audience. And then it would be like me having to like explain myself on like CBC, <laughs> the Q would be like, I just think some people might not know where their hole is. And I think it's important that I showed them. <laughs> By okay. the way, do you know what edging is? And I just <laughs> <laughs> Link to our podcast. <laughs> okay. Uh, thanks for listening. Uh, anything else, Mr. Spreadsheet? No, are you kidding? I, I should go. <laughs> okay. Okay. See you guys later. Thanks for listening. Bye. Yes.